All right, let's get some practice drawing Newman projections. And when we're looking at a molecule with the idea that we're going to uh, draw a Newman projection of it, we need to be able to visualize or um, envision ourselves looking down this arrow here as though we're looking end on to the paper. And thus we should envision this OH coming up and to the right. And we should envision this methyl group going down to the left. If we're, if we're observing this molecule down uh, this arrow here. And so we need to start by drawing our standard Newman projection skeleton. This carbon here, I'll put a dot here. That's this carbon. And thus below the arrow is this methyl group. So let's make that a methyl group. And then the wedge is coming out towards uh, us as we look at the screen, but if we were, if this were our eyeball here, the OH would be coming out to our right. So we'll put that there. And then of course there's a hydrogen here. We don't want to forget that. And then if we look down this bond and kind of look at this carbon that's circled, that's going to be represented by this circle on our Newman projection. Above the arrow is this ethyl group. So we can do that or we can write ET at the end of the line down into the left or back into the page in this case is the methyl group and then of course the hydrogen that is not originally drawn we're going to put in here so this is the Newman projection of the molecule in this conformation we might ask uh, we might be asked to draw the highest and lowest energy Newman projections and so remember that the lowest energy Newman projection has the largest group on each carbon farthest from each other. So the dot carbon has an H, an OH, and a methyl. So the largest group is this methyl. The back carbon has a methyl, ethyl, and H. The largest group is this ethyl. So I would say that we have the lowest energy conformer already drawn. That's not always going to be the case. Uh, sometimes we'll just draw one and it'll be sort of in the middle. We'll have to rotate a little bit. In order to get the highest energy, we just need to put the two largest groups eclipsing each other. So in this case, I'm going to draw a 180 degree rotation around this carbon-carbon bond. And I'm going to draw an eclipsed version of a Newman projection. I'm going to keep the first carbon the same. The back carbon is again a circle, except now There's my ethyl, there's my hydrogen, and there's my methyl on the back side. So all of these groups took a 180 degree rotation. And of course this is the eclipsing or eclipsed version. This will be the highest energy. And as we learned in the book and discussed in class, there are three different eclipsed conformers, but because the largest groups here are eclipsing each other, that's where we get to the highest energy. So let's let's look at one more example of drawing a Newman projection. Um, I'd like to start with uh, something that looks like looks like this. It's kind of a, a different uh, way of thinking about what we start with. And so let's look down this bond again. So I have a methyl that's below. I have the two hydrogens. And then now, if I look at this carbon, I still have something in the plane of the page below the arrow. So immediately I'm drawing the eclipsed version, or one of the eclipsed versions. Up and to the left is the chlorine, that's the dash. Up and to the right is the ethyl. And so here, if I want to get to the highest energy, I need to take the largest group, the ethyl, and the methyl and make sure that they are eclipsing. So I need to rotate this 60 degrees, still maintaining the eclipsed orientation. Basically I'm just going to put the ethyl where the methyl was, put the methyl where the chlorine was, and put the chlorine where the ethyl was. So this is the highest energy. And that's because the ethyl largest group on the back carbon, the methyl largest group on the front, are eclipsing. So if I wanted to go for the lowest energy, 
that's basically the exact opposite of uh, this drawing. I need to flip it 180 degrees, come up with a staggered conformation. So again, I'm going to draw the front carbon without any changes. I'm going to draw the back carbon, set it up so that it's staggered. I'm going to put the largest group as far away from the methyl as I can. That puts the CH3 down into the right and the chlorine down into the left. So this is the lowest energy conformer. By having my two largest groups, I'll put them in boxes right now, as far apart as possible. We don't want any gauche interactions. As we see a gauche right here between the methyl and the methyl, that's not as bad as a gauche between methyl and ethyl, which is larger. So this gauche is okay. There's nothing we can do to avoid that. We just want to avoid a gauche between the ethyl and the methyl.